guys, it's your girl Steph Scoops and I'm joined one of the UK's brightest and funniest TV presenters, Georgie O'Kell. How's it going, Georgie? Uh, great, especially after that introduction. Thank you. I love that. Well, the reason why we've come here today is to discuss about your bid to run in the London Marathon. What has made you decide to run 26.2 miles? Is that crucial point two, isn't it? Um, I it's kind of something I thought about doing for a while and always made excuses, you know, not to do it because it sounded hard. Um, but actually, quite sadly, my grandfather, who I was very close to, uh, passed away last year from cancer. And just suddenly seeing firsthand how kind of aggressive and sudden that can happen and can affect people's lives. Um, really had an effect on me and we were all sat around the, the table a few weeks later with all the family and we were talking about Macmillan who had made a huge impact uh, looking after my grandfather and, and, and talking to my nana and helping her out and they were just there through the whole process and I kind of said oh maybe I could run the marathon for Macmillan or something just kind of as a, an offhand comment but all my family said yeah that's great that's great try and do that and so I, I, I got in touch with Macmillan they said yeah come and join our team and also, you've done a fundraiser where you got people like Professor Green, your T4 colleagues, yeah. Rizzle Kicks. Was it quite easy to get them on boards? No, it, honestly, I will never organise anything like that again. Uh, but it was it was such a fun night, and they all stayed like Rizzle Kicks were there right to the end of stuff. But it's it's really tough because you're kind of emailing pluggers and management and stuff and say, you know, there's there's no money in this, and it's in this little venue in East London, and it's to raise money for a marathon. Um, and I need these people that are in the middle of tours and stuff to just kind of donate their time and come. But they were all, it, it wasn't easy because it's just, because obviously there's the temptation when you're sending emails out like for, for everyone to be like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll get back to you. And it's never going to be top of their priority list. But once people start confirming, people start getting into it, I was kind of overwhelmed by how many people were willing to show their support. How can people get involved in terms of supporting you for Macmillan for the marathon next month? Um, they can please go on my Just Giving page, which is justgiving.com forward slash Georgie Yokel. Uh, there's a link to it on my Twitter as well, if you forget or if that's wrong, but I don't think it is. Um, and obviously, I mean, just it's, Macmillan have loads of events all the time, so just supporting them in, in general is brilliant. Um, and also, just if you're in London, turn up because t for 26 miles I'll need some people cheering and clapping and spurring me on because like you say you know it's a psychological challenge as much as anything else so yeah uh, donate some money and turn up on the day I think. You've had a really good career so far as a presenter on T4 is it something that you're still passionate about and still kind of pinch yourself? Oh yeah I mean I've only been, I've been doing it a year and a half maybe and uh, yeah, it's a kind of a cliche, but there are still days I wake up and I'm like, how is this my job? This is nuts. Um, no, I absolutely love it. And the team that we've got at the moment is just such a n nice group of people. Um, Will, and Matt and Grimmy and Jamila, and we all, you know, generally chat on the phone and go out for coffee and hang out. And they're just a, a good bunch of people. And yeah, really support that. Like, like you said, you know, they all came down to the fundraiser and DJ'd uh, questionable levels of skill. But yeah, no, it's great. It's good, it's good and how did you get into TV presenting? Um, it was a weird one, like not a normal route, I don't think. I was at uni doing international politics, but then kind of thought I wanted to work in music maybe. So I came to London, was working for a record label for a year and a half. Uh, and then um, kind of just overheard in the office someone had come back from a meeting uh, with Princess Productions and said oh I think I think T4 are screen testing and I said oh I could do that maybe uh, just kind of as an offhand comment but ended up through that you know I went to one of the kind of first open calls they did for a new presenter and then um, went through kind of six or seven screen tests and then started doing a bit of online stuff and then through that a couple of you know interviews and then finally last January they let me loose on the actual television. You are a big fashionista, as I can tell. <laughs> what inspires your look? Do you know what? It's, it's so funny, that whole fashion thing, when you start in TV and then people say you're fashionable. For me, I like things that are colourful. I like things that are uh, patterned and kind of things that border on kitsch, I think. So, like, this, like, kooky little uh, necklace I got yesterday is, like, some little rabbit thing kind of kits were really fun. Uh, this jacket, my friend Tutu actually uh, is a designer, she's based in Hackney um, via Berlin and Vietnam, uh, just makes these just amazing, bold kind of, I guess I like clothes that are 
feminine but not like pretty girly you know um so yeah just stuff that's a little bit different what do you think people should rule style rules that people should have I think it's just don't be scared. Like, if you're going to an event and you think, oh, everyone else will be wearing, like, little dresses and stuff. If you see some, like, crazy pattern jumpsuit that's a bit like, I don't know. If it kind of suits you and it fits well and you like it, just wear it. And as long as you're wearing it with a bit of confidence, like, it'll look great. And finally, what would be your advice for someone who's just found out a family member has cancer? Uh, it's a... It's a tough one and it kind of I don't think anything prepares you for it because you and you hear stories you know cancer is unfortunately affects so much of of the country and of the world at the moment nothing can prepare you for it but I think uh, you know it really brought our family together and just you know checking the rest of your family are okay you know seeing if you can do anything just make people's life easy you know do the shopping for them kind of just be there for your family be in touch with the family and don't be scared yeah you, you know it, it was weird for me and my sister we've never had kind of emotional conversations before where we'd be crying on the phone to each other but don't be afraid of that kind of suddenly showing your family members that you are really upset because you, you know they're feeling the same so just kind of be there for each other support in any kind of general way you can by doing the shopping and whatnot but just be, yeah talk to your family and Amazing. It was lovely meeting you, Georgie, and good luck for next month with Team Georgie for the London Marathon. Yeah. Thanks.